Titchy little ones? I, like you'd see on the handbag, right? Either diamonds or rhinestones, but her family was proper flush. So I think it really was diamonds. Totally bling. I don't know what any of that means. And then this other girl, Dana, Dana, I can't remember, tried to nick it. Not the saddle, the entire horse. She got on, got on when no one was looking and just rode off. Of course she got herself nicked and then the fuzz brought her back crying all, crying all over the place. God, she was the worst. I remember one time she caught onto a boy named Alexander who was dating another girl in the form. Peggy. I jumped. Peggy stared wide-eyed at Ossie who slammed her fist on the table. I'm sick of hearing about your sixth form. Do you think any of us care? We don't know these people. We will never know these people. We do not care about these people. Most of these stories aren't even interesting. The diamond saddle was a little interesting. Oh, she's from 1 for 12. Oh, she's 1 for 12. Let's give her a round of applause. Asi glared at Ashley, who looked away. I swear, if I ever have to hear about your sixth form again, I'll smack you across the face. Learn to read the room. Maybe if you did, you wouldn't be so bloody annoying. Finished with her tirade, Asi grabbed herself another helping of noodles and then took her plate and left the room. Well, it, whatever resemblance of her being nice seemed to kind of dissipate, dissipate. Boy, that was mean, wasn't it? Peggy laughed nervously and avoided her eyes. Wasn't it? She was out of line, wasn't she? A stiff silence met her question. After a few seconds, Ashley squeak, squeaked up. She was definitely a little harsh, if you ask me. Right. Peggy fiddled with her fork for the rest of the meal, which didn't last very long. Suddenly everyone grew ravenous and finished their food in moments, at which point they hastily shuffled out of the room. Finally it was just Peggy and me, which is partly because I was terribly a slow leader. Hey, Flynn. Yes, Peggy? Am I annoying? Not at all. You're fine the way you are. A little, but I like you anyway. Peggy winced. Ouch. Wait, really, you do? Of course. Screw them. Maybe they don't like it, but you don't have to go around pleasing everybody. If you like the way you are, then that's what's more important. Do you? Oops. Peggy seemed so tough and determined, I never really thought of her as insecure. Okay, but are, but are the reasons you don't like yourself legitimate, or are you just being mean? I'm guessing you're being mean. You're kind, smart, energetic, passionate, and all about saving and protecting people. You've got nothing to feel bad about. Sure, maybe you talk a lot sometimes, but I talk too little, so we balance each other out, right? She beamed at me. Maybe we're both wrong. I chuckled. She didn't seem upset anymore, at least. Peggy gathered up her things. I should go. Thanks, Flynn. She took her plate up and sick, a thoughtful smile on her face. I thought that was the most honest answer. I guess she'd still think the situation over, and maybe she would make some changes. But at least if she did, she would make them because she wanted to make them, not because Asu told her to. Yeah. You should be, you should be the kind of, you should be yourself. You should be yourself and people should accept you for you. But that doesn't mean that we all don't have things that we could improve on as long as we want to improve on them, you know. Looks like I did good. Looks like you did well. I woke with a shudder. I had a terrible nightmare about getting trapped in the Euro Tunnel on the train between England and France, stuck down there in the dark with the white with the entire English Channel over my head. Gah! Rubbing my eyes, I crawled out of bed and started to get ready for the day. I had just pulled up my clothes when there was a slight rapping against my door. Flynn? Yes. The knob turned. I forgot to lock it when I went. I forgot to lock it when I went to bed. Before I could grab for it, Ji Hyo burst her way in. Hey, I need a favor. Uh, I didn't give you permission to come in here. She looked me up and down, an eyebrow raised. Well, you're not naked. What's the problem? I nearly was, though. Oh, that's not a big deal for guys. You're half naked in public all the time. Maybe some guys are, but... Anyways, I need your help on a painting today. I was hoping you'd come with me. Me? Really? I frowned, scratching the back of my head. So you need someone to carry your stuff? She crossed her arms. Come on, I'm not like that. No, I need your presence near me. I want you to join my flow. Whoa, that sounded a little... I won't keep you more than a few hours, and it's your day off too, so... Please? How did you know that? I have my ways. She grinned and I again found myself wondering about her. Her personality was so hard to pin down. 
Had she asked around to find out about my schedule? Was she interested in me? Did I want her to be? Uh, not this time. I think she's kind of creeping me out. She frowned. Really? I mean, if you have other plans. It's not that I have other plans, really. I just... I mean, I do. I do have other plans. Ugh, smooth, Flynn. She clasped her hands together behind her back and laughed. Yeah, it was silly of me to think. Anyway, I let you get to your, uh, engagement. Thanks. It wasn't that I didn't like Jiho at all, but she was a little strange and I didn't really want to spend my free day with her. Um, no hard feelings? She shook her head at me. It looked more like a shake of annoyance than a gesture of reassurance. I'll see you. Well, that was awkward. When is Danny gonna ask me if I want to hang out with him? Every other person... Oh, there's Danny. Thank you for your help. No problem, Angie. That's not my name. I know, man, I know. He grinned and Angela walked away, shaking his head. Um, Danny, can I... As soon as he noticed I was there and that we were alone, Danny left the room. Oh. Danny had been avoiding me lately. He still spoke to me as, as if things were normal when we were surrounded by other people. But every time we had an opportunity to speak privately, a smile fell and he ran from me as fast as he could. This time, however, I decided to tail him. Good. Go after him. You can't avoid me forever, Danny. He stopped to look at me and shake his head, then disappeared into his room. Danny! I stood out outside his bedroom door. Please talk to me. I'm not gonna hurt you or anything. I don't bite, and I haven't punched anyone since elementary school. His voice was only slightly muffled by the door between us. You've punched someone before? Yeah, in the stomach. He threw up afterwards, and I got in loads of trouble. I felt bad. Ace. So you'll talk to me then? His door cracked open a bit and he stuck his face through. Depends. What exactly do you want to talk to me about so badly? You and I, we never really talked. No, I suppose we haven't. It's because the game hasn't been letting me. If the game had given me opportunities to go after Danny to talk to him, I would have. No, I suppose we haven't, but isn't that reason enough to do so now? I have some questions for you anyway. He grimaced and pulled the door open wider. My guess is that you my guess is that you won't leave me alone until you get whatever answers you're looking for. Is, is that about right? Hmm. I have to know. I need you, we need to we need to be able to talk. Come on, I wanna be your friend. Or more. Yep, definitely. You don't seem like the type to get tired or bored, and I'd rather not feel like I'm dancing on mines when I go for a snack. He sighed and I grinned feeling only a little bad for pestering him so much. Alright, but we're not having this conversation here. I don't want anybody else to overhear this. We walked to a cafe, making idle chit-chat on the way over. At least I made chit-chat. Danny almost looked almost constipated. He was so closed up. I had no idea that what was making him so nervous. It was like he already had an idea of how this conversation would pan out, but he didn't even know what I was there to ask. We sat at a table, up against the front window, me with a minty mocha and him with some kind of fancy black tea. Danny sipped his drink politely, looking like a medieval knight or an aristocratic gentleman. He had a kind of effortless poise and a grace that other men would be desperate to emulate. So Flynn, I pricked up. What do you think of me really? What do you know about me? You're a great guy with low self-esteem. I told you before, you're an all-around great guy. You're smart, you're attractive, you're considerate, you have hobbies, you're a team player, and you held the hostel together almost single-handed. And for some reason, despite all that, you've got a self-confidence problem. I don't know why. Maybe your parents were too hard on you when you were young. Maybe you screwed up once and you can't stop blaming yourself. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. That's where you're wrong. It's hard when nobody around you knows. Sometimes I completely forget that it ever happened, and sometimes it's all I can think about. Well, then, you should talk about it then. Tell me then. Tell me why I'm wrong. Everyone here smiles and laughs so easily. It's like they've never struggled. They've never been some one they've never been someone bad. Now is your chance to turn back. We could pretend this never happened. Sometimes you really do wish you had never known something. No, I definitely want to know. I'm sure it's fine. He sighed. 
Don't say I didn't warn you. I won't bother ask. I won't bother asking that you think of. I won't bother asking that you think of me. What you think of me after I tell you, especially because I'm still some parts. I I will never explain more than what I will say now. Stop acting like you know how I'll react. It's annoying me. He chuckled. I suppose. Well then, he folded his hands on the table and took a deep breath. I spent years in a young offenders institute, top security. I won't tell you exactly when or where or why. It was all committed under a different name. I will not tell you what my birth name is. Interesting. What I did was bad enough that I was granted an anonymity when I was released to prevent anyone from tracking me down to get revenge. Mary Bell Order, they call it. The Danny you know is very different from the person I was before I got locked up. And even for a time after I came out of it, it took a while for me to face the bad parts about myself. Yeah, but you're... Whoever you are now is... That's the point. Whoever you are now is different from who you were before. That's the point. Whatever you did in your past, you know, you picked yourself up and you made yourself a better person because of it. So... I don't think that's big of an issue. I think about it sometimes. Everyone acts like it's so easy for them to be good. I wonder where I went wrong or what was wrong with me. What is wrong with me that makes it so tempting? But I digress. There it is. That's why I don't think I'm a good person. Because I know I am not. But I'm also not the same person I was. That's the important thing. I've made vast improvements. I'm safe to be around. I won't hurt other people. You don't need to worry about that. Although I understand if you don't trust me. He took a sip of his tea. Then met my eyes for the first time in days. So? I... That wasn't what I expected to hear. Not at all. Considering he didn't want to tell me why he went to jail, I had to assume it was something seriously bad. And while he was a child at that... Yeah, he was a child. He was a child. So, I mean, that wasn't this bad. What did he do? The fact that he was okay with me is assuming the worst. Murder... Did that mean he had done it? Did he mean he had done worse than the worst? But he was sitting expectantly in front of me, waiting for a response. Suddenly, the friendly and controlled exterior he always showed around the hostel, the concern for and awareness of the other's needs, made sense. He taught himself how to behave that way precisely because it was not natural for him. And all the time I'd known him, he had been nothing but kind and chivalrous. A bit moody, but reliable. Almost like a father figure. If he'd been older, of course. But this Danny in front of me now, this Danny was different. He was approaching me as an equal, and judging from the tension in his hands, he was nervous. Set your teeth on edge, have I? That's about right. He laughed bitterly. It doesn't, it does, it, it doesn't bother me, man. I mean, the fact that he recognized that there was something bad about him, and he wanted to fix it. He wanted to make himself better. I mean... That says a lot, and that's what really matters in the end. It doesn't bother me. I smiled and tried to put him at ease. Why didn't you tell me before? It, isn't it obvious? I'm your friend, Danny. We're friends. I'm not going to judge you because of something you did in the past. You've been nothing but kind to me. Well, up until now. Now I know you've been lying to me. Frankly, I'm hurt. I grinned at him, and he seemed utterly bewildered. I'm... Sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. Hey, I'm not upset, I'm just trying to explain this to you. I'm not going to judge you based on the past. Whoever you were before doesn't matter. Danny is the guy I know. The new you. And as far as I can see, he's got nothing to be ashamed of. Danny suddenly placed his hand over mine and leaned across the table towards me. Oh, there we go. Whoa. And then he kisses, and then he kissed me. He pulled away, then laughed. Whoa, Danny! The look on your face, it's... <laughs> Sorry. Did I upset you? I didn't mean to, I just couldn't control myself. Ooh, now, now, I think I'm... I think Flynn's a little glad that the bad boy... The bad boy's coming out a little bit. That's okay. I had my eye on you ever since you moved in, you know? You had that look about you, like... There might be something there, but... I didn't want to push my luck. I'm a bad apple, and you're only here for a few more months. Crash and burn is a shoe in and For all that, I, I want to be with you if you're willing to give it a go. I don't expect you to decide immediately. Just 
Give me a chance. Think about it. All right. He beamed. Great. Now let's get you back to the hostel before one of the lads in here gets some idea about stealing you away. Oh, nice. This talk ended well. Thank you, Flynn. You're truly remarkable. He shook his hand. His head. No, you're truly remarkable, Danny. The fact that you're able to turn yourself around, turn your life around, and take control of your life is admirable. I'm sure we'll probably find out later what he did. Anyways, I'll give you some space. I'm sure I'm coming on terribly strong. Have a good night, Flynn. Good night, Danny. He crossed the hall and went to his room. I shut my door and stumbled over to my bed. So, not only was he some kind of ex-convict, but he also had feelings for me? How did I feel about Danny? Did I want to pursue a relationship with him? Especially now that I knew the truth? But even now, I didn't know the whole truth. What if he had hurt someone in the past? Did I want to entrust my safety and my heart to a man like that? It was all too much. Suddenly exhausted, I crawled under my covers and closed my eyes. In no time, I was asleep. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> I had been in England for more than two months now. There were a lot of things I missed about New York. Decent pizza and pastrami, for example. But I was also getting pretty comfortable in my new environment. I was definitely seeing new things and meeting new people. But I hadn't at this point achieved the goal that Nene and Jin Su were so eager for me to. I wasn't officially dating anyone. Did I want to be? Wow. Nice. So apparently I have enough to pursue Peggy or Danny. I'm going after Danny. Oh yes. Danny had left the ball in my court. He made it clear that he was interested in me, but that it was up to me if I wanted to take things any further. And the truth was, I did. Whether that was dangerous or not, I wasn't entirely sure. But nothing in life came without risk. I liked him. I was attracted to him. He trusted me. Those sounded like the ingredients for at least the start of a relationship. I knocked on Danny's door, but no one was there. Eventually, I tracked him outside, down outside the hostel. Danny? Hi, Flynn. I wanted to tell you. I've been thinking things over, and... I've never been with a guy before. Actually, I've never been with anyone. Oh, really? I was never Mr. Popular back home. Seems hard to believe. You get along well enough with everyone here. I chuckled weakly. Did he always have to be so nice? It ma made me feel awkward. Well, then maybe I never met the right person. I don't know. I just want you to know that I don't really know what I'm doing. But I think I would like to pursue things with you. Well, then. He took a step close to, closer to me. For a second, I was acutely aware of the strength of his body. Strength that could crush me in a moment, if he chose. Then he kissed me. Very gently. Thank you for trusting me. I will be careful with you. We'll take things slow. If at any point you feel uncomfortable, tell me and I'll back off. For now, how about a date? Say on Saturday? Sounds good to me! I put my hand in his. It felt good, letting him take control. Perhaps this was what I wanted all along. Nice. Get me to Saturday. I sat on my bed in the hostel, feeling a little out of sorts. With no classes this week because of the half-term break, I had extra time on my hands. I wasn't quite sure what to do with it. I did wish I could go. I could have gone home for a visit. It'd be nice to catch up with Jin Su and Nene and let them know how much how my adventure had been going so far. Right, I should call them later this evening, when the time difference would make it reasonable. But that was for later. What should I do with my time now and for the rest of the week? Explore the city, read more books. Exercise, improve appearance. Hmm. I feel like... I feel like Danny... Danny said he's already attracted to me. So I don't know if I necessarily need to improve my appearance, but seeing how, you know, I didn't do so well with the whole soccer thing, the football thing, I think exercise is probably the right thing to do. My job kept me on my feet all the time, but that wasn't the same as focus, sustained exercise. Just because I was off in a foreign land was no excuse to ignore my health. There was probably no way I could afford to visit a gym in London. Was there? I did some internet research and was surprised at how many leisure centers were actually available. They had gyms, swimming pools, climbing walls, courts, and classes for all kinds of sports. I was briefly consumed by squash being a sport, 
but apparently it was some kind of racquetball. It had been ages since I'd been swimming, and the weather was starting to get warmer now. That would probably be fun! Well, there was no time like the present. This break was only one week after all. Nice. So we did some exercising. I lay back in my bed enjoying lazy morning. Today was St. Patrick's Day. Back home would be an excuse for people to paint themselves green and hit the bars and get totally wa wasted. At least people who were old enough to drink. Here in England I was old enough, but I wasn't sure that was how, really how I wanted to spend my day, or my limited budget. Sure I could drop into the Crafty Crown and see if Ashley could or would hook me up, but it wasn't really fun to drink where I worked. Besides, I didn't want to get into trouble. Well, London certainly wasn't short on pubs. Maybe I should go out and find somewhere different, just for comparison. But I was definitely not going to get myself puking drunk. I had more sense than that. Be careful on your way up. Danny peeked over the edge of the grassy peak he was on, pointing to a pothole in the trail I was currently walking. Okay, I will. You can't come to England and not see any of the actual countryside. That was what Danny had insisted. So here we are, far from London, in some place called the Downs, which might as well be called the Ups. Danny, being spry and active, was already at the top, waiting for me. I was huffing and puffing down below. It was a good thing I had gotten some exercise on my spring break this week. Oh, nice. They, they, no, they noticed that. It was a good thing I had gotten some exercise on my spring break week, or this might have been the death of me. Nice. That was the right thing to do with Danny. Flynn, be careful. I am... Ah! I hit the ground with a heavy thud, feeling something in my ankle pop. Pain flooded my leg, and I cried out in pain. What happened? Danny was down the slope before I had time to call for him. I half believed he slid down its surface, but that would have been insane, and crouched in front of me. Don't move. He placed a hand on my ankle and leg, and let out a slow, low sigh. Thank goodness. You twisted it. It doesn't look serious enough to be a sprain, but I'd rather not risk you walking much on it. Is he going to carry me on his back? Oh. I turned my head away. What's wrong? Nothing. It's stupid. I was nearly at the top, and now I won't get to see the view. Makes the whole thing seem like a waste. Whoa! Danny wrapped his arms around me and pulled me up, supporting most of my weight while I balanced on my good foot. Not on my watch. I love it I love it when he when he winks at, at, at me. Not on my watch. Lean on me. If you can't make it, let me know. I'll carry you. <sighs> He's so great. Come on, man. I'm way too heavy for that. Danny laughed. Is that a challenge? Feeling the strength of his arms around me, I began to believe that he could really do it. Several minutes later, we reached the top of the hill. Danny set me down in a safe place on the cliff's edge and sat down next to me. It's a great view, isn't it? Mmm, yes it is, Danny. Yes it is. Oh, oh, you're talking about the, you're talking about the landscape. Oh, 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 okay. Right. Yeah, it's amazing. I gazed across the gently rolling hills. Almost everything was shades of green, with square fields marked off by thin, dark boundaries of hedges and trees. Far away I could see a cluster of houses that must have been a village. Some parts of rural New York looked a bit like this, I think, but mostly we had more trees, more wilderness. It seems like every part of England is owned and controlled by people even out here. Nothing's really wild. I guess it's because the country is smaller, and it's been settled for so long? There are a few wild places, but they have to be pretty hard. They have to be pretty hard to get to, or someone would have tamed them already. You should try the far points of Scotland, or maybe Wales. I'll bet you don't have any bears, though. He laughed. No, no bears. No big cats, either. Though there's rumors every now and then. No poisonous snakes. We are the most dangerous animals in England. You could probably fight a bear off with your hands. You're very strong. There's not much to do when you're locked up except lift weights. I tried to control my urge to shiver. I wasn't scared of him. He'd been nothing but good to me, but when he talked about being dangerous, I didn't know how to feel. I don't know, I think that's kind of hot, actually. So, have you had a good spring break? I didn't see you around much. I needed a bit of a break from revising. Been out and about a lot, like this. I wonder if you've gone to see your family. He stiffened. Uh-oh. Does the family have something to do with its past? Are you... Do you still see them? You never talked about them. There's not much to say. No, I'm not on speaking terms with most of my blood. I've got a grand I see sometimes. That's all. 
I'm sorry. Better this way. Too many bad memories on both sides. I'm building a new life now. I hope it's a happy one. It is. As long as you're with me. Danny. Come here. He leaned towards me obligingly and I kissed his cheek with a smile. Just his cheek. I'm a lucky guy to have someone like you. Danny smiled at me, a hint of mischief in his eyes. Why? I'm the best man there is. Don't you ever think different? Nice. <laughs> the spring semester break was over, and classes were on again. That didn't really mean so much for the university. No huge changes were going to happen, classes would go on, the same as they did ever did. For me though, it meant that my time in England was a bit less than no half over. I had the rest of the semester, and then final exams, then a couple of extra weeks at the end of, to enjoy my vacation, and then I would leave. Maybe I would be able to come back to England someday, or maybe that would be the end forever. I didn't know. I had met a lot of people here. I had my group of relationships, and I probably wasn't going to make strong bonds with anyone new. My path was set. From here on out, I was seeing the results of my choices so far. Well, let's get to it. A passing gentleman blinked at me, talking to myself, but he didn't say anything. Of course he didn't. The British hated to raise a fuss after all. I couldn't help laughing quietly as I went down on my way to class. I was eating breakfast with Assie and Brendan when James entered the room. The yard's looking right a mess again today. Grass is a mess. You three, get it tidy. I groaned, but James is already gone. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it either. <laughs> they both up and left the dining room. Really? So now I had to be the one to mow the lawn ball by myself? What the heck was wrong with these two? I sighed. Maybe Danny will help me. It was backbreaking and exhausting and took me hours to do it right. When I finished, James was just walk waking, walking up with an egg bagel in his hand. Good. He went inside and it was all I could do to not kick the lawnmower and hurt my foot. Okay. Hmm, that's odd. I walked in the kitchen and find Ashley on her hands and knees, searching under the cabinets. Is something wrong? Yeah, the frying pan was missing. I wanted to take an omelet. To make an omelet, but without a pan, I can't. She pouted, her cheeks puffing out like a chipmunk. I laughed. I'll help you find it. Thank you, Flynn. Together we searched every corner of the kitchen, each and every cabinet, drawer, nook and cranny. The frying pan was nowhere to be seen. Someone must have taken it into their room, or maybe they borrowed it for an event? A banging pots together, Matt March? How strange. They should at least be kind enough to leave a note. Well, thank you for helping me. Now I can rest easy, even if I don't have my omelet. You're welcome, Ashley. Ooh, April Fool's Day. Hmm. <laughs> At times I'd ask myself, how did Danny manage to keep all of his darker urges bottled up? It became apparent to me as soon as I attended an actual Premier League football game with him. Of course he couldn't have fouled. That was a right foul. Danny seemed to use sports as an outlet. Standing in the stadium with thousands of other screaming fans, he wasn't out of place at all. Perhaps he used his aggression in the actual field as well. It would make more sense, then, why his reaction to me congratulating him when he played was don't. Football culture in Britain was a completely different thing from what it was in the States, in more than just the name. Of course, sports in the States could get crazy, but things never got this crazy. At least I didn't think so. I don't know, I think we can get pretty crazy with our sports. In the States, we tended to expect anyone with a British accent to be someone upper-class aristocratic, and there were a few of those, what Danny would call posh types, here, but mostly this was England of the working classes, bricklayers, plumbers, middle-aged men, teenage girls, sweaty jocks, a whole world that we never saw in our depictions of Britain. It was an odd feeling, a really odd feeling, but it was also nice. I loved attending high school and university games in America because it always gave a sense of community. All these people uniting around one common goal. Suddenly I realized it could be the same anywhere, if anything. I started feeling like people really weren't that different, no matter where you go. Goal! I screamed and clapped along with the people around me. Not that different. Not different at all. I threw open the door to my room and flung myself on my bed. Oh my god, I'm so tired. Danny shut the door behind him, chuckling. It was a long day, wasn't it? But we won in the end. So worth it. Uh-oh. Danny's in our room. Yeah, my feet are sore, though. 
I kicked off my shoes and socks and began to rub some life back into them, collapsing onto my bed. 